Good evening. Organisers hope to put on the greatest show on earth, but Newsnight has unearthed allegations of corruption ahead of London's 2012 Olympic Games. The claims centre around the world of boxing. Insiders have told us that a senior member of the Amateur International Boxing Association guaranteed that Azerbaijan would be awarded two gold medals in return for secret payments of millions of dollars. We've tracked down the man who's said to have done the deal, and we've also found his boss, who's told Newsnight tonight that there'll be an immediate investigation into the matter. Anna Adams has this exclusive report. Ten months time, boxers from around the world will be fighting it out at London 2012. Each one hoping they at least have a chance of winning an Olympic gold. But we've been speaking to people at the very heart of Olympic boxing who say it's not that straightforward. They claim medals can be bought and sold for the right price. How easy is it to buy a medal now? To buy a medal, it's, it's easy. He was talking about gold medals at London in return for millions of dollars of secret payments. So as long as Azerbaijan got their medals, they would get the cash. We've been investigating these allegations for a year, and we've put them to the men who run Olympic boxing. We have witnesses who said that you promised Azerbaijan two it gold medals at London 2012 in return for $10 million. First of all, no comment. Secondly, absolute lie. A lie or no comment? Olympic boxing has had its fair share of scandals and accusations of match-fixing. The most notorious episode was in Seoul in 1988. American boxer Roy Jones Jr. landed twice as many punches as his opponent, but the judges still awarded the gold to a South Korean fighter. Oh, no. Two, two, they give it to Park, and he doesn't deserve it by no standards. Does he deserve it? There were allegations that the former president of the International Boxing Association had accepted two million dollars from South Korea in return for two gold medals. But even at the last Olympics in Beijing, there were accusations of corruption. The president of AIBA, boxing's governing body, Dr. Chinko Wu, has been keen to clean up the sport. There was no more uh, manipulation, no more cheating. The AIBA is now become a clean, honest and transparent organization. Wu appointed Ho Kim and Ivan Kodabash to run his brainchild, World Series Boxing. They wanted to branch into the world of professional boxing with a new World Series. WSB, a global tournament with franchises in every continent. Millions of dollars to be made if everything goes to plan. But America was vital to Aiba's plans for the World Series. They needed to get cities like New York, Chicago and LA on board to generate ticket sales and TV deals. The really big money in boxing is here in the US. The pay-per-view deals alone are worth tens of millions of dollars and that's even just for a single fight. So really without the US on board, there would be no World Series. But the sums just didn't add up at all. So when the New York and Chicago franchises started to pull out, the whole venture looked like it could actually collapse. They were losing a fortune and they needed to be bailed out. Jeff Benz was their man in LA. He managed the Los Angeles Matadors. So uh, when they first pitched me to take this on, you know, was, don't worry, we're well funded, we're going to do this right, it's going to change the face of boxing. Four. But the funds were drying up, the accounts were in the red, but Ivan Kodabash came to the States to tell them not to worry, because somebody had stepped in to bail them out. What did they tell you about where the money had actually come from? Mr. Kodabash uh, told us uh, at varying times, first it was from a, uh, an investor from Azerbaijan, and at other times we were told that it was from an individual affiliated with or the government of Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan is rich from oil and gas, and it's keen to show it's come a long way since its Soviet past. And it's also keen to showcase its boxing. Today is the start of the World Championships. They were supposed to be in South Korea, but then Aiba switched them to Baku, the capital of Azerbaijan. Aiba is based here in Lausanne in Switzerland. It's the Olympic capital, home of the IOC and World Series boxing. We wanted to ask them where their funding had come from. 
We've obtained emails between World Series Boxing and Azerbaijan. In the email, it refers to a meeting in Baku with a government minister to discuss funding. And attached is an investment agreement, $10 million. Well, we've been told that um, the money for WSB America came from Azerbaijan. The money for WSB America came from an investment company here in, uh, based in Switzerland. But the documents seem to tell a different story. They show the investment agreement was presented to the Minister of Emergency Situations in Azerbaijan. Because you must have seen this before. It has your name on here. This you, is know, you know how many documents are around the world which I, I send per day over 200 emails. I think you would remember an investment agreement for $10 million, though. This I would, is not just I would, any document. An email sent by Ivan Kodabash to an Azeri government official asked if he could please transfer the investment money as soon as possible to the WSB America account in Switzerland. We've learned that somebody in Azerbaijan has already paid $9 million. Days after we interviewed Ivan Kodabash, the boxing authorities revised their story. They now admit the money came from Azerbaijan, but not, they say, from the government. They said the only reason they used someone in government to facilitate the deal was because the real investor, who is still a mystery, doesn't speak good enough English. The WSB franchises in the States were also keen to know more about who was paying their bills. So what did you make of this mystery investment? Well, it made me wonder if what the Aiba folks had told me was true, that there were links to the Azerbaijan government, what they were expecting to receive out of this. Because people, in my experience, governments or individuals just don't give money away, especially on the magnitude of 10 to 15 million dollars without some sort of expectation of quid pro quo or a promise. It didn't make sense to the boxing promoter Barry Hearn either. He was asked to look at the business model but he knew straight away that the finances just wouldn't work. So when an investor came, you know, a year into this tournament with 10 million dollars, what do you think of that? Well, I think you're very lucky to get the 10 million dollars, frankly. Um, if an investor comes into this game in $10 million, uh, I can only think he's arrived from another planet. Do you think he'd be expecting something in return? Uh, I would imagine that if he didn't think he was getting something in return, he should go straight to the funny farm. Insiders said Ivan Kodabash claimed Azerbaijan were going to get something in return. He came in and he said, it's okay, we're safe now. Azerbaijan came up with the money, but we're going to have to give them medals. He was talking about gold medals in London in return for millions of dollars of secret payments. Medals are being sold so blatantly now, it's amazing. Boxing commentator Jim Neely has had his doubts about Olympic boxing in the past. There have been instances down the years to suggest that there has been collusion and the result particularly of medals, whether they be gold, silver or bronze, has been actually preordained for whatever reason. In order to manipulate the system, it's really quite simple. If you want somebody to win, then what you simply don't do is press the button for the opponent. In other words, you can say, I didn't see it, I was unsighted, one boxer was in the way, the referee was in the way. If there's a, a scoring punch landed and three of the five judges simply don't press the button, then the poor chap who, who has landed the punch is not credited with the punch. Well, I've come to Bucharest to meet someone who says boxing matches were still being fixed as recently as the Beijing Olympics. And he should really know because he was the vice president of IBA at the time. Rudella Brazier was the technical delegate in Beijing. And he says he witnessed first-hand matches being fixed. This guy changed on each bout one, two, three judges. And finally I decide to have a press conference and to openly said what a lot of people is talking for many, many years about the manipulation in boxing. But he was shut up by Ho Kim, the man in charge of World Series Boxing. Do that officially, please stop, okay? Because it's going to create the damage of our sport. Insiders say it was his deputy, Ivan Kodabash, who told them Azerbaijan had been promised something. Well, Ivan boasted to a few of us that there was no need to worry about WSB having the coin to pay its bills. So long as the Azeris got their medals, WSB would have the cash. What do they mean by that? Well, London Olympics, those medals. Ivan made it clear that IBA would take care of Azerbaijan. 
We put these allegations to Ivan Kodabash. We've been told that you offered Azerbaijan two gold medals at London 2012 in this return for a $10 million. Dollars. This is a lie. This is an absolute lie. We are, we are a very transparent organization, AIBA is. We have done everything in our, uh, in our, uh, in, in our power to, to bring transparency to a sport which was ruled in a bad, uh, a bad manner. We have witnesses who said that you promised Azerbaijan two it gold medals a, at London 2012 in return of all, for $10 million. First of all, no comment. Secondly, absolute lie. A lie or no comment? I mean, because we have witnesses who have said I, that to I, us. I, I, can't, well, I mean, witnesses, I don't know who are the witnesses. So why are people saying this? Because maybe you have no idea what's going on normally in boxing and which type of uh, dubious people are working in boxing. Aber's lawyers, Carter Ruck, say any suggestion the loan agreement was in return for gold medals is preposterous and untrue. They say it's unfair and unjust to accuse Aber of corruption. They also say rigging an Olympic boxing match is impossible. There's no doubt the allegations have damaged the sport once again. Tonight, Aber say they will investigate, but is it enough to protect the integrity of Olympic boxing ahead of London 2012? That was Anna Adams.